Hello everyone, welcome to Wisconsin Entertainment Reforce Replay at Minas Terrath. Now, to get this map to work, you need to remove your unique settlements folder in your settlements folder, and you find that in your Third Age Reforged data folder. So if you can follow all that, you can play Minas Terrath. But before we get started, if you'd like to support my work, there's a PayPal option, subscribe star, Patreon, and stream last donation link in the description below, along with various methods you can use to contact me with to send through other Total War replays, like Reforged, Warhammer 2, Three Kingdoms, etc. However, if that's not an option for you, then please remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, tick that bell for notifications, and leave your own thoughts about the battle in the comment section below. With that, let's get into the replay. So today's replay comes from Captain Jervis. I just wanted to give you guys a quick shot there of, my, of the Minas Terrath map before we head down to the city and uh, start checking out the units. So we'll start with the second level, of course, and work our way down. The first of three defenders is a 5v3. Is Y2K86. He's got some Doondone Rangers here, some Fountain Guard. Belong to Jervis. I'll pull out the units as I see them, as the units are, of course, mixed in with each other. Got a couple units here of Fountain Guard, and some Nothian Honor Guard. Some dismounted Fornost Aaron Knights, some veterans of Eskiliath not armored up, I will note. Some Anumanas Gate Guards. So it looks like we've got Arthurdane and Gondor here so far. And moving into the second part, we have to go through the rock, of course. We have some Haven Guard, which is the final defender, belonging to Tundrus Fox. We have Doing on Troll Slayers, Warns of the North. This one is nice for Numinus. Obviously, Jervis is commanding Gondor. Uh, it's relatively a themed battle. It is Good Men Alliance, all defending Minas Terrath. I think uh, we'll move down to the second level. We'll call out hidden units later if we see them. We've got some Ed Helen Halberdiers, along with some, not well, second unit of Halberdiers. Some Tirithar Marksmen. This one of Fornost Aaron Knights. Parrot Hill Champions, 2 units, some Black Swan Renegades, some Belfast Marines, 2 units, some Arthur Day Men at Arms. These guys here appear to be armoured up all the way, yes they are. They've got full plated armour on the shoulders and the chest and the long cape, that's the indication they got the armour upgrade. That's a silver upgrade, cost you 100 coin to do that. We have some Dismounted Florence Aaron Knights, some Ed Helen Halberdiers, Ed Helen Men at Arms, I think all the Men at Arms too are armoured up. Yes, they are. You can tell because of the chest plate on the front. We have second unit of Tirithar Marksmen. Make that three, maybe. Oh, I think there's um no, my bad. It's just one unit here. We have some dismounted forest. Sorry, dismounted knights of Silver Swan again. My bad. After they men at arms, after they pikemen, Pelican Marines, knights of the Silver Swan. Lots of lots of cav here from Thunderous Fox. It's a bit of a gamble. Some Swan Knights, some. Ethereum of Dolemroth. So more Swan Knights. I think we've got some Haven Guard here. Haven Knights here, yes we do. Some Forest and Defenders. You're not the Honor Guard. Uh, Arthur named Pikeman, armored up. Some Guards with Skiliath. Gondor Infantry. This one of the Forest Aaron Knights. Gondor Archers. These guys here appear to be armored up halfway. Yes they are. They're missing the chest plate. That's the silver upgrade. Don't know why you didn't do that. It only cost you 25 points to do that for Gondor. Uh, extra 25, so it costs 50 to do that instead of the usual 100. We have some Arthurdain Marksman, armored up. A trebuchet, Axman Lost Knock. Now, this is pretty cool. The trebuchet can usually fire directly over the walls, but I'm not sure if that happens in this terror. I know it does for a lot of other settlements. We have some Wounds of the White Tower, Fountain Guard, Italian Rangers, Citadel Guard, Pelican Marines, Gondor Infantry, Guards of Skiliath, Arthurdain Men at Arms, some Arthurdain Marksman. These guys are armored up. Some Axe and Lostnark, max, up, max upgrade. Some Dundon Peacekeepers. Gondor Archers, again, armored up halfway. And some more Gond so Marksmen of Keandros. And that appears to be that. Now let's move on to the first of five attacking armies. We got Clem, commanding Isengard. He's got some Urukai Pikemen. Some Urukai Infantry. Looks to be about four units here, along with some. I think half orc vanguard, two units. Some Urukai crossbows, two units. Guards of Orthanc, Urukai pikemen. Trolls of the White Hand, a catapult. And um, this is a catapult crew that has some sort of a glitch. By glitch, I mean 
the crew's invisible, so uh, it, you should be able to target them, invisible or not. So, but um, yeah, it just makes it hard to see. It looks like no one's pushing it. And we've got some Urkai Berserkers, I think, embedded in here. I don't see any. But I would be surprised if we didn't see some Nazgahai or at least Urkai Berserkers later. Not like that. Moving on to his ally. Or we could find his general. I oh, no, This is Mordor here, commanded by Joran. I just had the pleasure of playing with Joran. He is a good guy. We've got some Temple Executioners here. Arm it up all the way. I think. Yeah, that's just all the same unit there. The rest of his army is over here for some reason. We got some Moron Infantry, some Sauron's Will, Blackguard of Baradur, more Sauron's Will, two units of Orc Javelins, uh, another unit of Orc Javelins, four units maybe, some Bulldogs of Dirthang. We've got a, bit of more, got a bit of more respect here for Bulldogs of Dirthang. And when they first came to the game, I was a little bit iffy on them, and people had used them either badly or I saw them get destroyed quickly, but lately I've seen them used pretty well, and um, yeah, I'm coming around to them, I'm warming up to them. We got some Olakai, Troll Drummers, uh, a few more, maybe four units of Moron Infantry, if I had to guess. Some Nazgul probably embedded in here somewhere, I can't see them. But we'll come back to them later. Surprisingly, I didn't see any Temple Guard. But um, I could have missed it. This is an interesting formation, and not a bad idea considering the cav that the defenders brought with them. Anyway, the third attacker today is MP Beckamy13. He needs an introduction, and hopefully there's no desyncing. Fingers crossed. Uh, I was told there wasn't, so you know, don't worry about that, guys. We got some low flag rim here. Uh, four units. We have some low gamp rim. This is the one unit. Some Bathos Sapphire Blazeman. This is an elite um, javelin unit. Second tier is Bathos Trisman. Three units. Some Dragon's Wrath Guildsman. East Strong Clansman. These guys are your basic model, no armor upgrade whatsoever. When they are armored upgrade, they look like the low gamp rim, but with sword and shields. We have some Eastron crossbows, two units, not armoured up, as you can note, by the, not wearing the silver helms. Sorry, silver helms. They've got their bare head exposed. We have, as I said, two units of low gamp rim, and one unit of low canarium. Now, it looks like the cab can sweep either side here of MP's army, so MP's pretty vulnerable here. He's going to have to move quickly to defend himself if that cab does rush out at him. I think the cab can swarm either side. The fourth attacker is Orcs in the Misty Mountains, can by Stu Balrog. Again, a well known veteran of Reforged. He's got some Goblin Infantry, some Black Back Mountain Berserkers, some Black Uruks of Mountains, some War Riders, Mount Uruk Host, Heavy Goblin Crossbows, White Uruk Fearmongers, Mount Uruk Host, Heavy Goblins, Goblin King's Bodyguard, Cave Troll Drummers, Snow Trolls, and I think that could be it for him. Yep. Okay, move on to the final attacker. It is Angmar, coming out of an Irish gun. Irish gunner. He's got some Gundabad good Guard here, some Barrow Whites, Guardians of Karandum armoured up. He's got a couple units here armoured up. Blackwatch Legion armoured up. Some Angmar Marauders, Trolls of Gundabad. Some Witches, the dreaded Witches of Angmar. Some Angmar Marauders, Blackwatch Legion. Angmar Marauders again. We've got the Richon Pikemen here. These guys don't appear to be armoured up. So that could cost him. We'll see. And that could be it for him. No Trolls of Angmar, oddly enough. Again, hidden units possibly. We'll keep an eye out for them. Now, it's going to be hard for Irish to use his Witches here because he's got to get... Like, Witches are very particular with their line of sight. And he's got to get them inside Minas Terra to use them. So... It's going to be a challenge here. Just because you bring witches does not mean you're automatically going to get a lot of kills, guys. You got to you got to try and use them at the right opportunity and get them into the right position. Otherwise, they will not fire, and your enemy could gun them down pretty quickly. So watch out for that. And with that, let's get this replay started. Enjoy the siege of Minas Terra. Now we were going to do a small cut here, but I will wait for a second and see if the defenders do charge out their calf. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Here they come. Alright. Gates are closing. Oh, Minas Terrath is on fire. Already. Oh, 
Thunderous losing a little bit of cab there in that push. All right. Let's check out the other cab units. Okay, we've got three cab units here. We got the Swan Knights, Knights of the Silver Swan, and Arathima Del Amroth. Now already, Tundra's Frost could take out the Goblin King, Goblin Infantry pretty easily. They're pretty exposed and vulnerable. We've got War Riders here. Swan Knights should be able to take them on. Knights of the Silver Swan can act like a sledgehammer just to give them a good knock before charging in the Knights of the Silver Swan to finish them off. But we're going for the first charge, of course. No, it could be better. I'm a little bit bladed up. Oh, what happened here? Wargrove's been caught out. Stu Balrog. Caught sleeping. Nice charge there from the Silver Swan. Took out a lot of them. Nice little Silver Swan getting a good charge there on the Mount Eric Coast. Tundra's getting some nice kills here. Okay, we've got Stu Balrog scrambling now to save his army. He's uh, he's very exposed here. All right, that's bad charge on the Atlantis part. That's very good for Stu Balrog. And we've got some javelins coming in from some Snaga skirmishes. That'll definitely help drive off Dol Amroth. Let's go over here check out what's going on. Okay, Thunderous Fox not using these guys at all. I don't know why, he's not charging in. The Black Guard of Barador are a prime target and they're a deadly unit he could take out at will. He's simply, maybe he's not allowed to. The other Kai maybe he's afraid of, I don't know, but um, just because these guys are here does not mean they're impenetrable. They're very vulnerable. So Tundras is, maybe Tundras is just sort of focused over here, marking these guys. Okay, Irish guns moving away. Okay, he's moving in. Oh, we missed it. That's what we thought was going to happen. I really think he needs to get some spears or pikes into the background there. He's got to get his Alok High in the mix. He's losing men. He needs his ally. Clem needs to get here to help him out. MP Beckham, he needs to get over here. Big loss here for Joran. He's got to do something. Clem needs his pikemen. Is Clem coming or not? Okay, Clem's coming, but um, he's uh, struggling a little bit. You can see the shadows of the spears flickering in the sun there. Pretty cool. Alright, what's going on over here? Ah, we've got archers firing at him. He's in ranges here, loading up. Probably shouldn't be. Odd move here from Captain Jervis. I get the Arthur Master. I don't get his ranges being here. He's wasting his ammunition. Barrowwatch is pretty tough. Okay, 
Okay, defenders forming up the def they'll they're out of the their perimeters, sorry. Not the best perimeter here from Stu Balrog. Very exposed. And they don't seem to have too many missile units to shoot back at the um, at the cavalry. We've got trolls charging in. That's definitely a good thing. Tell you what, Tundras is having a field day out here with these cows. Clans Pikeman is on the move. Blackout of Baradors all, all been pretty much wiped out. I don't think there's any units left alive. Knights of the Silver Swan, the Joran's relief is broken. But the Haven Knights are still here, and this is not a good idea. You should wait. He needs to get. He needs Clem's pikemen. Once Clem's pikemen get here, they'll pretty much render these guys useless. That Tundra is going in for one more charge. Can't resist. Neither would I. I'd go straight in myself. Down to twenty-seven six men. Two to eleven percent. Okay, now Joran's army is uh, what's left of it is secure. I'm sure Clem got over here as quickly as he could, but um, damage is done really. Irish is being shot at. He's got to get his units out of out of range here. We've got Witches of Angmar here, they've already lost one unit. I don't know why Irish is letting himself be shot here, he's got to get his army out of there. MP has not moved at all. He's established a perimeter. The enemy are through the walls. Fight on. And Kaylee, the attackers have broke down the walls here. Okay, so that was Clem with his catapult. They're still going to break down the gate. Tundras looks like he's been caught asleep. He's getting his cab out of there. Oh, that guy was lucky. Alright. Irish is getting his army out of there finally. I mean, he was taking a lot of hits there. He's setting up a perimeter. He's got to move, he's got to be a bit more proactive with his perimeter. Right now it's just one side, the FM can easily run around it and attack his units here. It looks like that is his plan, it looks like he's starting to form up a perimeter. It was a little bit slow to do so. And Tundras seized the opportunity very nicely. We got work in that room in the back here. Where are they firing at? Okay, they're trying to target the cav. Uh, fairly decent hit. Ah, I mean, this Terry. Alright, guys, we might actually. Um, I was gonna say we might do a small cut, but it looks like we've got a small little battle on our hands between MP and Tundras' Cav. 
Oh, this is not good. Crossbow. Yeah, here comes the late game room to save the army. Well, this is a this is a positive here, guys. Judging from the players' movements, it definitely hasn't desynced because players don't maneuver their troops to defend themselves if they have desynced. I just don't know what was what I was what was taking Irish so long to get his troops into position. If we go back, he set up his perimeter now. Now that his army is secure, before it was extremely vulnerable and being shot at. I'm sorry to pick on you, Irish. It's just I know you've done much better than this in the past, so I was a little bit surprised you got caught out there the way you did. Still Bowers moving up. Okay, he's made a second wall here with his catapult. Doesn't seem like um, Clam is planning to save much of his ammunition for the coming battle ahead. But the, the benefit of bringing down these walls is it's um, forced the defenders to group up their archers in one place. Because these guys can still get off the walls here, they can come down here. These guys here, here, and these guys here, here. If he knocks down the wall here on this side, then it will kill these guys and trap them on the walls. And then when they ran out of ammunition, he won't really have to worry about them. The attackers, I mean. But, it looks like we will do a small cut here, guys, and we will come back shortly. See you soon. Alright guys, we're back because Tundras is not done with these cab fights just yet. This is gonna Oh he, he pulled out! He pulled out! He had the Mountain of Crest dead to rights, so there was no way they were gonna repel him. He's over here though. Oh nice charge here on the Black Bat Mountain Berserkers. Judging from that charge, he got at least six or seven kills, that's pretty good. And he buddied him up and almost took out the general here. So it was, a, it was a good try. Stunger skirmishers moving out. They're not really known well for their cav, the anti-cav feet uh, traits, but um, I suppose they might, if they get a volley off with the javelins, they'll do enough damage to kill Tumsh's cav, I guess. He's got to protect his troll drummers as well. They're pretty vulnerable there. Again, now I'm seeing the attackers start behaving like attackers. They're protecting themselves a bit better. They're forming up their defense. They're recognizing the danger now that Tundras' cab poses. I mean, Tundras has been a real thorn in their sides. He's taken out 14% of their army alone. Well, minus the fire there from Gondor on the wall there, but still, a lot of the cabs, a lot of the kills out here definitely came from Tundras' cab. And Irish is moving up his siege towers, which is um, which is definitely a good thing. We're gonna try and get the attackers on the back foot here. And what's good about assaulting this part of Minas Tirith? Is there is not too many defenders here to repel him. So if he moves quickly and deploys his troops on the walls and gets them down, he has a shot here to really get a foothold inside Minas Tirith to help out his teammates. And this is what Irish wants to see. He wants the defenders to shoot upwards. He wants them to lob their arrow shots up. So as you can see, they're only getting a few hits there on his orc fellas. Now, Jervis will definitely want to get these guys off the walls quickly. These siege towers are in position. Oh, I can't resist. Yeah, it's pretty tempting. Oh, he's going after the Blackwatch Legion. A great target there for the Rangers to choose. But he's got to get these archers at the walls. The Orc Pels are almost at the top. The enemy siege tower has reached our walls. Orc Pels are almost ready. See the Rangers marching, but they're not moving very fast. This is not Jervis's fault. Sometimes your troops are just slow to move off the walls. I bet he's, he's pressing it. Right now, he's probably pressing the run button as fast as he can, or maybe clicking it many times trying to get his troops to move. Sometimes, this is just sometimes what happens, I've noticed. You want to get your troops off the walls, but sometimes they just won't move. It could be a pathfinding issue, I'm not sure. We've got some Peritol champions coming to their aid. Jervis probably will get these Rangers off, but right now, he's just struggling. Okay, Tekka Siege Towers definitely coming up. 
Yep, moving into position. Flanders now moving up his siege towers. Mostly to protect his army up there. He's already made a couple of holes through the walls there. There you go, Joe's finally got his troops off the walls. Okay, Cam was definitely not going to save any ammunition here for the battle of the head. He's just going to use the catapult to knock down the walls. It's actually okay within this terrace because unlike some maps like... What was it? I can't kind of do It was Osgiliath, that's right. Unlike Osgiliath, you can actually move your army through the gap. So hopefully those gaps that work out for the attackers as intended. This is a 62,000 frame leap break, so I definitely got my coffee on hand. Hopefully you guys do as well. We got a lot of action ahead of us. Oh, they decapitated him. He's not a champion anymore. Do a quick survey of the army. Okay, mostly MPs troops are intact. Catapult still here. Are oh, they gonna smash down the gate? The enemy siege tower has reached our walls. Commander of Coast maneuvering into position, the gate is not damaged, as far as I can tell. Well the gate is gone. So maybe they have smashed through it already. No, I just forgot. Hang on. Okay. Catapult's targeting this section of the wall now. Oh good, Joran has moved up his siege towers. And Clem is over here. He's not really moving up his army at all yet. Looks like Joran's thinking about going in first. Repel them. Arthur, they march in here. Yeah, it's time to get your archers off the walls. I'm not going to do you any good there. We've got Snugger Skirmishers here. We've got. Okay, so we've got some pikemen here. We've got no defense here. We've got some Pelican Marines over here, but. Don't know. Get their marksman looks like they're out of ammunition and they have their swords out anyway. So I'm just gotta be careful there with the snugger skirmishes. Okay, now if this works out as intended, let's see if I can get some nice hits here. YTK charging out some forces that could be detrimental to the defense. Oh, he was just rushing the snugger skirmishes. Now, Super has got to be careful here. They should move that batting ram out of the way. They could catch a lot of the javelins in flight. Yeah. Oh, we've got some fire there from the crossbows here. MP Beckney's got his crossbows in position. Time to just better get his troops out of there. Alright, a lot of them are winding up. Reloading, here we go. Okay, we've got some return fire there, which is good. But, um... YTK's army's taking a lot of hits here. He's losing a lot of pikemen. Get their marks from returning fire. They gotta do something about that Snuggers scam, which is Stu Balrog is getting too many easy kills on him. These guys are down to only 32, so they've only lost 10. 400 end defenders charging out, trying to rush the Snuggers skirmishes. Stu Balrog pulling out. Alright, let's look at the walls here, see what's going on. Okay, we've got some Mount Nero Coast here from Stu Balrog assaulting the walls here. Looks like no other attack is underway. 
before you pull back. Okay, so Irish is thinking about going in, but not going in just yet. His witches are a little bit bloodied up from that experience. Oh no, he's got them. He's got them on auto fire, I think. Oh, turn them off, turn them off. Oi. He's got about two or three more volleys left in him. It's good that he stopped them. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. No, it really hurt him. Witcher fire is almost considered gold here in this game. It's very rare. <laughs> you don't have that much of it. Be very careful with how you use it. Wow, Isengard's claim is going in. Only half the enemy force remains. Well, if he's going in, Joran's definitely got to follow him. Apparently the Marines here could decimate them if they so choose. But, Y2K is moving in his pikemen. Here we go. Jeez, everyone's a little bit dusty, you see that? Probably all due to a long march to get here. Gondor did call for aid after all, and Dol Amroth and Arthur Dane answered the call. Well, you know, good on for Clem for being brave to charge in like that. He's not doing too bad, all things considered, this is actually um, a pretty good charge. It's what every attacker should probably dream of, because we don't have... We have no ranger fire coming in, we have no javelin fire coming in. And he's getting some damage and kills on the defense. Just for this, this a couple of units here of Rokai infantry, so... And now we've got some fire from the Slanker skirmishes, so... You know, things are looking up here for Clem. It's not a bad attack, and it looks like Joran's assaulting the walls here. Joran actually could be the reason that Clem's attack is going as well as it is. It looks like he's drawing some fire there from the defense. Okay, yeah. Well, Clem is actually here, and they're being totally destroyed by the Ethelian Rangers. Devastating. And we've got Pelican Marines being deployed here too. We also have some Grey Company from Y2K86, which I did not see before. Alright, so uh, this unit of Rokai Infantry is on its last legs, they will not stand up much longer. No way. Okay, nice opening start. It is 16 to 25. Now 16 to 26. Sweet. We're doing well. Alright, we'll have a look. We've got some Sarans Will coming to the aid of Clem here. They're coming down. They should be appearing here. Any second now. If that works as advertised. Yep, here they come. Now what, what is this fountain guard kind of going to do? Okay, we've got a great company here. Oh, they're trying to fire at the moral infantry. No, white decay should save the ammunition. He doesn't have the angle. They're wasting a lot of ammunition. They're not getting too many hits. They're getting a couple, but it's not worth it. It's just infantry. We got Gondor archers here, trying to fire on MPs crossbows. Obviously taking out enough. We got a small unit here of Kirtan Marksman protecting the wall there. Doing a quick survey on this side again. The attackers on this side slow to go in, very slow, in fact. We've got Barrow Whites here. I don't know why they're so nervous about going in. We've got, what, one unit of Belfast Marines. We've got some Athelian Rangers here, but they're not firing at the moment. And they've got a lot of defenders on the walls here, which you can't fire in until the defenders are thinned out a bit. So, you know, I don't know why Irish is being as passive as he is. 
But uh, I say passive, but he looks like he's sending some guys to current doom right now, which is good. Definitely needs to. Our cunning foe has reached our walls with their siege tower. Okay, Steel Barrel not really going in himself. Steel Barrel being a little bit passive as well. We've got some heavy goblin crossbows here. Oh, nice work. Y2K, a little bit slow off the foot. Well, I don't know, it looks like he's trying to load up, I don't know. But um, if, he can't, if troops can't fire, get him out of there. It is 19 to 31. Still heavily in favour of the defenders at this point, which is good, but damn, is he getting a lot of free hits here on Y2K. Y2K has got to get his attention on these guys and get him out of there. It's a valuable unit. At least while they have ammunition, then go nuts afterwards, I don't care. Now, Clem's attack obviously failed here, but you know, you can still see a lot of dead troops here. We've got some Athenian Rangers on standby. Oh, this is a mistake here from Jervis. He's charging in now. But good work. Nice volleys there from Jura. The enemy siege tower has reached our walls. Where's that fire coming from, I wonder? Is that coming from over here? Yes, it is. Gondor Archers. Okay, 21 to 33. Still pretty close. Right now that bar's showing in favour of the attackers, so... Right now it looks like the attackers are winning so far in this fight. What have we got going on? Okay. Now it looks like Y2K spread out his troops, but okay, now they're firing. That's good, but you know, more than half the units is, is dead. It looks like Jeros has a few units of Athelian Rangers, maybe two or three. I, I'm not really. I'm gonna say two so far. I think he's only got two. Okay, Grey Company's here. What are they shooting at? Okay, it looks like they're shooting at the Guardians of Current Doom. Good target. Yeah, the Barrow Whites have got to shuffle their way into the fight. Yeah, it takes them a long time to get in the battle. Okay. Irish King trips up there, but he's got to move quickly. He's got to try and press these guys to get. He's doing it. But I bet he wishes this be going a bit faster because the sooner he kills these guys, the sooner he can get off the walls. Looks like some Belfast Marines firing into him as well. He should have been deploying in this siege tower. He's already put it into position. Looks like he's going to move his marauders here to get there. But um... okay, so doing a quick survey here, Minas Tirith. We'll go from the walls. We'll start from this side. So Irish assault is well on the way. He's under heavy fire though from the Grey Company. But as soon as he can get off the walls... Oh no, the Grey Company is uh, withdrawn. Or gone invisible. So it definitely makes Irish's life a lot easier. Belfast Marines not firing. Don't seem to have a target. Okay, Angmar Marauders here broke. Steel Barrel not assaulting the walls on this side at all. Okay, Jervis is wasting ammunition here. The defenders... Sorry, the attackers would be loving this. Jervis has halted his fire now that he's seen his shots fail. Looks like he's lost a few men here to that. Looks like the crossbows did a number on him. Okay, we've got snow trolls here looking to break down the outer layer defense, and they're doing that. We've only got a few troops left here. There's a famous horse in the courtyard. Alright. Looks like Jervis is trying to get his Gondor archers off the walls. Rune there is getting some good hits on the Belfast Marines. Duran's attack unfortunately has failed, same with Clems. But they still have sizable armies left. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. Clem has a lot of troops left. Joran unfortunately lost his Black Guard of Baradur that could really bite the attackers later. It's bloody unfortunate that he lost them to the Tundras Fox so early. But 
look, I don't think there's anything Joran can do. Aside from the Yellow Kai, he, didn't, he doesn't really have any punch or speed units, so pretty much Thunderous heading dead to ropes. I'm surprised Thunderous didn't try to really wipe Mordor out and focus him down with all these cap. You know, the cycle charge, the cycle charge, after cycle charge, you know? I think Thunderous could have, um, if he focused on Mordor, I think he could have wiped Mordor out pretty much himself before Clem, made, before Clem got to him. The other attackers were way too spread out to help him. That being said, Tundus did extremely well with his cab, I'm not bagging on his I'm not bagging on his choices. But I'm saying if he had he chose Mordor just Mordor himself, I think Mordor could have been wiped out and defeated already. Yeah, Joran should have should have brought some pikes or hard halberds at least. You should always bring at least one unit of spears, pikes or halberds. You gotta defend your troops. We've got some good javelin fire here. Oh, great coming from Y2K. It looks like they've used up all their ammunition already. Okay, we're about one third of the way through this fight. Snow Troll's moving back in just to defend the Snaggers Skirmishers. Oh, Clans lent him some Snaggers Skirmishers. Sorry, Snaggers Skirmishers himself. Okay, we've got witches here. Looks like Iris sent his witches all the way across the wall here. He's looking for a target. I think he will find it, but he's got to get his witches a little bit to the left. I think it's a little bit more to the left. Careful, careful. Here comes the great company. Okay, Snyder's going to moving in to defend the witches. Snyder Troll's coming back in as well. Good old snow trolls. You think the snow trolls have a long face, but it's just a helmet. What's going on here? Looks like witches are on the fire. Oh no! Oh shoot! Okay, Irish, very very lucky there. Huge, huge relief for him to get away the way he did. Belfast Marine's got a full volley there, but didn't, didn't take any down. But looks like they're severely damaged. They could fall in a heartbeat under any pressure, so you know, Irish has got to really be careful now. Okay, so what's it like over here? Clem and Joran, Clem and Joran not pressing their attack yet. I think they're waiting on MP, Irish and Stu to really make their move, try and push the defenders out from the outer defence. Although how they plan to do that is it looks to be a little bit difficult. So far, every assault has uh, not gone very well. They've got to try and rethink their strategy here. Hopefully, they can come up with something to give themselves an edge. They've got to break through and force the defenders back somehow. Okay, problem crossbows. MP Beckham is getting in the way here of the Goblin Crossbows. Stuart has got to communicate better with MP here. And get that batting ram out of the way. It's only going to hinder the assault. And Thunderous Fox's cab has not gone away yet. Joran's probably very nervous about them. Okay, MP has got to hold these fight. He might set his own siege tower on fire by accident if he's not careful. Now, yeah. all right. So look, the situation right now is we've got some Black Swan Renegades. We have some Halberdiers, Men at Arms, more Marines. I think. The strategy here should be Irish climbs on this siege tower, tries to engage these forces here, and at the same time sends the rest of his army on the siege towers here, tries to take this position, tries to start moving the defenders back this way. 
I mean, he's got to do something here. He can't, he can't rely on his allies to assault because right now all the defenders are focused on, you know, this section and onwards throughout the city. He's got to try and push the defenders back a bit. He's got to try and either take, either draw more defenders to his assault so that his allies have a better shot with theirs. You know, someone's got to take the bullet. Someone's got to be the be the sacrifice, really. Got to do something here. Oh no! I mean, yes and no. The witches just took out three of these snow trolls. That's not what you want. And that won't hurt the attackers. Sorry, that won't hurt the defenders too much because, at the end of the day, they were just marines. But that would uh, that would only be a, a good move. After these Belfast Rains had a lot of ammunition. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. But. Yeah, you've got to save your witches to take out some better troops, you know, like Dismounted Knights of Numinus. Or Dismounted, yeah, Dismounted Knights of Numinus, Haven Guard, Fountain Guard, I mean, not the Honor Guard, you know, big heavy hitters. Or even maybe a full unit of Tirthan Marksmen. Doesn't look like these guys have used up too much ammunition themselves. You know, they got to scare the defenders somehow, you know? I think, I think the defenders, the attackers, sorry, could actually start swinging things in their favor by pushing this position hard, which it looks like they're starting to, and at the same time, Irish assaults as well, you know? Just put a lot of pressure all at once and see if they, or hope the defenders break, really, at this point. Because right now, it's 33 to 45%. Okay, got javelin fire there, good javelin fire from the Belfast Marines. Okay, I'm just getting a lot of good kills here. No Alright. Those javelins definitely hurt their assault. Okay, now this is going to be a big plus here for the attackers. They're making a big push in one area. We've got Irish sending over his Blackwatch Legion to break through the defense quickly. Now, as you can see, we've got troops being pulled over here from either side. That could help Irish's assault if he wants to go in. Look, we've got troops being pulled off here now. Look, that assault pulled off all the defenders here. Now's the time for Irish to go in. He's got to rush. He's got to go. It's time to move. We've got the trip. His allies need him. He's, it's now open. The door is open. He just has to walk in. The longer he waits, the more likely his allies will fall. They need his support. They need his troops. I know he sent some Black Watch Legion over here, but you know now's the time. He could even send his witches up here on the walls and target the defenders here on the ground. I mean, he can easily go up the siege tower. It's in position. He could charge up if he so choose. Same goes for the same goes for the crossbows. They can get up here on the walls. They got I know they've got the defenders here to worry about. But that's what these guys are for. They could charge in and keep them busy. I seriously am stunned that Irish is not moving here. But the Northern Island guy now getting into position. Probably try probably to try and keep these guys busy. But you know, it is time to move. That was signaled by the big push here from MP and Stu. And now they're under heavy assault here from the Rangers. Clam's got to push in, Joran's got to push in. But they're not. And it could be as a detriment to their allies, MP and Stu. I and mean, they're needed. What is he doing? These are light spear troops. The they will not do shit. Sorry for the language. Holy smokes, it looks like Tundra's is too busy to notice. Well, you have my apology, Joran. Although now I think you're screwed because I mean, all, he, all he has to do is come back and you are in trouble.
But um, yeah, this is not a time to sit back and see how this assault goes. This is a time to go in. Got a mass chain around here, of course, by that trebuchet. We got scenario skirmishes in. Definitely a good idea, but the witches should be up on here on the walls. Yep, I'm really pinging out on this one, Irish. You should have. I don't know why I'm not sending up your troops here. Oh, he did. He did. Okay, okay. I am dead wrong there. I am dead wrong, and I will own it. Irish, I am very sorry. Well done. Well done to that assault, although if <laughs> I'm still being a pain in the ass, I know. But I would have used the witches up here, man. I would have used the witches here because there's a lot of troops here that you could have killed. Those Black Sun Renegades were not there before. All you need to get all you needed to do is get one shot in maybe. Or have your witches fire from in here because it looks like this little blob here has caused the defenders to move up a lot of troops. Again, it's Belfast Marines. Ah! Trolls with my hand doing a good job. We've got a lot of javelin fire coming in. But it's just knowing the skirmishes are firing at, so that's not bad. And, you know, Irish did take out an elite unit of Gondor. I did say that was one of the targets that we should go after. Okay, right now it is 47 to 56. The defenders are still holding that 10% margin. Now, did he get his witches off the walls? Or are they gone? Did he use up all their ammunition? No, no, they're still on the walls here. They're down to 9. Now, uh, Iris definitely redeemed himself by taking out pretty much that entire unit of the Nothian Honor Guard. Although, you know, I think setting up the army, his army would have helped. We've got Black Sun Renegades who will probably be sent against Irish's forces. Belfast Marines getting a lot of good fire there. Looks like they're out of ammunition, unfortunately, for the defenders. One year back of tribes and looks to be out of ammunition. I think we've got Nazca High here. Yes, we do. Clans Nazca High are in the mix. They should do pretty well here. We've got the k Dummies in the back there from Shield providing good morale support. We'll head back and check out um, Thunderous's Haven Guard. Haven Knights, sorry, in a second. But I thought we'd just have a quick admire of this battle here and check out the Battle of the Front Gate, see how that's going as well. Trolls of the White Hand have pretty much been destroyed. Okay, Guards of Warthank are not being brought into the fight. Well, it says they are fighting, but these guys aren't being pressed into battle yet. We've got Black Bear Mountain Berserkers here. They're down to 45. They haven't lost too many. Okay, Clem is committing a lot of resources here. Could expose him to a bit of ranger fire. We've got Snaga skirmishes, I think, here. Okay, they're trying to target the rangers, trying to keep them off, claim his back. Might be time for Joran to send in his forces. Send in his old, like, high bulldogs of death thing. Just to try and keep the defense spread out a bit. You know, you've got to try and make sure the defenders can't focus them down. Okay, MP's got his MP has got his um, Malcolm Trajan here. We got Tirte Martin, Hundred Fox now making a big mistake. He could easily fire on the Malcolm Trajan. Okay, uh, fortunately for Tundras, it looks like these particular Malcolm Trajan don't have any ammunition. Okay, we do have, I think, Dragon's Wrath Gilsman. They could have ammunition, I'm not sure. Okay, 
where we are going on here. Okay, the defense is starting to fail here on the, on the outer level. We still have a few troops here from Tundras. He could try and, Aris could try and sneak up his witches here to take out all these men if he wanted to. It looks like Aris is not going to go up through the siege towers here, he's going to go through the main gate. That's not a good idea. It's not a good idea because Tundra's Fox can now attack the attackers from the rear as they push forward this way. Their attention will be focused on the push. They're leaving their rear exposed. Okay, they're having guys through the walls. They'll break these guys for sure. And they're broken. Bulldogs are death thing. What's your arm up to? Is he coming in? He's coming in. And we've got MP redeploying over here. Amazingly, a lot of MP's troops are yet to be committed to the fight. And we've got Dragon's Wrath Crossbowmen, which I did not see before. Ah, oh, it's good to see Minas Tirith again. It's been a while. Alrighty. Damn, this map looks good. Okay, it's nice skirmish fire coming from Steward Balrog. Okay, Dragon's Wrath Gilson loading up. Now these guys used to used to throw fireball grenades, but now they've switched to daggers. It looks worse than it really is, guys, that far. I see them hit, but I don't see too many troops go down because of it. You know? I don't know why. Okay, I'm trying to as you can see, providing the emotional support. It looks like Jarvis is either saving his range of fire or he's out completely. Either way, I don't see too much Arrowfire coming into this big bottle of attackers. Okay, I think we've got some movement there in the background in the distance. I think I see Thomas's forces that I was worried about. Okay, Joe sent up his what's left of his not the honor guard. Yeah, Thomas is making his move. Now these troops won't deal too much damage, but Okay, it looks like Stu is sending in his general unit here against the Buckstone Renegades. And Med Ed Hedelman at arms. This is a big gamble here for Stu. He's got to send up additional support. He doesn't want to lose his general. Especially for Lord Simish Mountains. You cannot lose your general. It's like Dorwinian. Pretty much renders your army useless under any high pressure situation. Looks like he's getting out of there. Looks like he's maneuvering, Tundra's maneuvering his med and helmet arms around here. We have crossbows here. Oh, okay, crossbows are out of ammunition. Oh, nice hit. Yes, we did see too much hit fire coming from the trebuchet before. I suspect we'll see it now. The attackers need this to turn this battle around. The attackers have brought this one to 6% mines in here. This is the lowest we've ever seen it, aside from the start. Oh, it looks like, oh no, is he trying to fire again with his trebuchet? I don't know what he's doing. Okay, it looks like he's trying to fire it again. Now go high out front. We've lost half of our men. Okay, 36,000 frames into it. We're over halfway now. And they're not firing in the trebuchet, they're going to save it for later. Not a bad idea, but I think they could have got a lot of kills if they got one more volley into this massive blob here. We'll see. It probably is, it probably is worth it, saving it later. 
probably have to withdraw these tier 10 marksmen soon. And we've got Ethelian Rangers here. Okay, communication here from the defenders has failed. Well, failed badly. We've got Jervis here. His troops here are forced to shoot up, as you can see. He's wasting Ranger fire. It's not good. It's time to withdraw these tier 10 marksmen too. I don't know why Tennis was leaving them in the fight. Okay, looks like he's scrambling now to get him out of there. What we got going on? What kind of enemy fire is coming in? Where's that from? I don't know. Where is the Axe and Osnark going? If he's, going, if he's going to do that, he needs to attack him from this side as well. This, that kind of maneuver only works if you assault from two different locations. I mean, Axeman Osnark versus Pikeman. Pikeman win this battle. And now they're about to be sandwiched in, so... A bit of an error there from Jervis. He's allowed his forces to get sandwiched. He could break them. They're already shaken. He needs rangers or, or any archers to come forth. Oh, unlucky for Stu. Tear with that mask and just managed to get to wipe out the last of them. Now this is a, now this is odd. I don't see troll drummers usually brought to the front lines on their own because attacking is not they're not known for their attack ability, just their morale boosting ability. But if the goal here is to get them to halt their fire while the rest of the army advances, then you know mission accomplished. Okay, he's putting them in the garden mode, so that's why they can fire again. Okay, Tundras is getting out of there. Oh, this guy, this guy's just rapping away. He's loving it. Enjoying their victory. We got Veterans of Gilead here. I think their plan is to shoot into the blob as it surmounts the hill here. Or summons the hill, sorry. Okay, now, now Stu is making a mistake, sending his cave troll drummers this far. I mean, I get it before, I don't get it now. He needs those to, to boost the attackers' forces as they try to summon out the wall. So I summit the hill. Now, just going through the map here. Yeah, this is a capture point. Now, the attackers can can try to do this from two different ways. They can go from one direction, or they can beat the forces here, force them back, and then simply go around the long way to try and outflank the attackers here and take the Citadel. Let's see. First, I gotta get through this, through this point. And as you can see, the defenders have a lot of ammunition in the tank. It's 67 now to 69. Pretty close. These guys actually could be armored up. Their armor just darkens from the dust and blood. Okay, Jervis had two units there, I mean, nothing on the guard, it would seem. Can you bring up the witches? Is it a good idea to send, in, send up the witches? If he could, that'd be really, really good. If he can get one fire in there, he can kill a lot of men. But he's got these guys to worry about, and I don't think they'll let that happen. Okay, Stude has his general at the very front, tip of the spear. Okay, he's getting out of there. Now this clam still have his catapult. Maybe he doesn't. Yeah, check it out. Floating barrels. 
Now we got the rest of MP's army coming through in all this glory. Looks like, yeah, you know, we got Lurk Flag Rim coming up. Looks like they're separated a little bit. Yep, Clams has got his catapult. I, was, I thought it was moving before. I guess not. I can't tell. But it looks like Clem has two men left of his catapult crew. Two is all he needs. Don't know. Okay, so the attack has begun. Okay, Clem would definitely would have wanted to go shot here on the defenders, but I don't think he can where he is. We've got 20,000 frames or so left. She is being very aggressive here with his general. There's no way up, there's no way but forwards, and these guys will definitely open fire in their backs. They've already started. But, you know, this is probably the best thing here for the, the, for the attackers. They're doing their ranges firing in just to one unit, and some of their arrows are going into the side of the hill here. He needs to get some crossbows there on the hill to try and fire back at him. Look okay, how Pike's broke there. Snug as soon as he's broke before he even got into the fight. Stude is trying to, trying, I'm saying, really emphasizing the word trying there, to hit the ranges with these Snuggers skirmishes, but it's not working out too well. And the attackers need Clem's pikemen here to go toe to toe with the, with the defender's pikemen. And if possible, the witches need to be brought up. Bad fire there from the Snuggers skirmishes. It looks like they're out of ammunition. The high direct female members need support. Okay, here comes another unit of depleted Urukai pikemen. Good and bad forces have got to get into the fight as well. I don't know why they're, they're just standing there. Come on, guys. Okay, Good and Bad has finally moved up. Good and Bad guard. Now, this had to happen. But because we've seen this happen, we definitely expect to see a lot of arrows come in shortly. Now the only reason maybe the answers aren't firing is that they had a truce, I don't know. I don't know. Why two cars loading up? Most of the arrow fire is clearing the the ledge. 
Seems on fire though, what's going on? The range is not firing. Okay, they're using fire arrows. Let's see how she's moving in. Uh, very hit and miss there with the Snuggle Skirmish Fire. Pelican Marines being brought in down to 29. Snuggle's targeting them, they should have much more success here with the Pelican Marines. Forces here are shaking and wavering. It is 68 to 71. Defenders conserving their ammunition. Kidoki. So, white Eric female members have been in battle for a while, they're down to 8, we're losing the troops fast. A lot of, a lot of skirmish fire unfortunately going on the side of the hill there. The shoot is trying to wear them down as best he can. Okay, we've got the Olog High now being brought in. Now, what I'm, what I'm thinking, what's, what the, the attackers are hoping for is that the defenders push down the hill so their crossbows will have their turn and be able to fire on the defending troops as they move down the hill. It's a big if. I don't think the defenders will do it. We've got to see a big push, we've got to see something. And we've got a lot of men here in reserve. But I get it. Those those arrow those archers there will give anybody pause. And they're very vulnerable, they're very exposed. They need the black guard of Barragor and unfortunately they don't have it. I think they still have the Black Watch Legion. If they do have any Black Watch Legion, they need to be brought in. Same goes with the witches. If the witches are here, they need to be brought up as well. I think if the witches were here and put right here, or maybe even here, and the attackers pulled back some troops here, the, the witches could get some really good fire here on them. And I said, big if. We got here. Been the guard broken. They're leaving. Looks like all the attackers are positioned here. Looks like we do have Blackwatch Legion. They are really needed here. If the attackers can move fast enough, they can push through, catch the, the defenders off guard. It seems like the attackers have withdrawn their ranges. Uh, they're up there, but they're moving, they've got to move in quickly.
Temple execution is here come the backwards legion. But with backwards legion, they need troops. They need a lot of a lot of muscle here. Yeah, it looks like Stuart is moving up his Goblin King's bodyguard. Yeah, this is the attacker's best chance to break through here. But Ola can't move up as well. Temple execution is time to go. This is a big push. This is a big move. This will help get their own troops into the defensive line. As you can see, they're under heavy fire. The strength of this push will not last very long. We've got Nazgahai being brought up, we've got MP being brought up, but it might be already be too late. I mean, the strength of that push there from the backwatch has already faltered and we've got the defenders now moving back in towards the top of the hill. And they really could have timed that a bit better. Lokai starting to fall. Where's the Temple Executioners? Are they, have they been brought up? I think they have. Oh no, they haven't. And an Azgul, I don't think, has either. And Pierce sent in a few, sent up a few units there. We've got Duna Rains moving in. Okay, the attackers, looks like the attackers are succeeding. They've got troops into the Rangers' ranks now. That's a big bonus there for the attack. Goblin King's bodyguard. They're firing anyway. I think the Goblin King's bodyguard would do better. We've got the Olag High here. The Emma Marauders will be in. Look, it is really time to go. Is if they can get enough troops here through this gap, they can take out the archers or at least force them back. And get them to stop firing into their rear ranks. But they're not firing right now anyway. anyway. They've stopped firing. You got Stuart. Stuart has got some Goblin King's bodyguard in there now. But we've got some Wardens of the North that could easily take them out as well. We've lost control of the city. Uh, looks like Tirith their Marksman. Oh, uh, they had ammunition. They're not using it. But yeah, I think we've got some Wardens of the North firing into their backs here. Yes, we do. Alright, looks like we've got some javelins here. A lot of javelins here. Men no longer command the city. Usually this should be a horrible idea, but given the size of the blob, we're certainly getting a lot of hits. Okay, we've got the mass push where we were after. It's a decent push. I don't know why Jairus isn't firing with his Redinger of Skillia. That does escape. Jervis is moving up the rest of his infantry. And he's trying to fire with his Pelican Marines. Oh, there you go, they're firing now. There you go. Seventy-six to seventy-eight. But it looks like the attackers need some more heavy hitters up here. Remains. OK, 
Okay, 77, 79, still a 2% difference. Joran amazingly is not setting up his temple executions. It's not the end here for these archers. The defenders can can get them out, they've just got to run them around. You've got Ethelian Rangers up here too, but they're not firing right now. Okay, one to the north, what are they up to? You've got Dim Nitrosas too, firing into the ranks. Okay, the benefit of doing that is it's forced um, MP to back off, really, and get his own troops into the defensive line here, into the front line, to use the defenders as a shield from the Dune Control Sides. I think Stuart is about to lose his general. He's getting really overwhelmed up here. Got my King's Bodyguard down to nine. That looked like Enlar's general. Got the defenders trying to use their javelins here. Okay, Joran's got his temple executions in the fight now. Yeah? Nice to hide down to 11. Seventy nine to eighty four, so the defenders pulled back a little bit there. And we're trying to hit the wall into the north, as you can see it's not working out too well for us. seems almost certain. What can the crossbows really do here? They can they hit enemy general lies dead. Our men have taken control of the city. So the Goblin Trackers here, that fires from Goblin Trackers, okay. I don't know whose general that was. Putting the pressure here. It's forcing back the attackers somewhat. Okay, we've got the trebuchet being moved up here. Could get some hits on him. So he's firing. Looks like he's trying to fire. But struggling. The defenders are looking a little bit thin here. 83 to 85, so the attackers have pulled back 3% in the last 5 minutes. Okay, that was an enemy general. Okay, that was a okay. We had a ally and attacking general. Sorry, defender and attacking general for within two seconds of each other. Really. The attackers are doing pretty well over here. I don't know why.
Temple execution is down to 48. Dragon's Wrath crossbows can't be used, they don't have the angle. Hopefully the Bulldog's a dirt thing right here. Let's have a look. What's left? We've got all javelins. Dinium Shadow Bows, 60. And is that it? Looks to be. So that Bulldog's a dirt thing, Nazgul, everything's got to be up there in that blob there. Too bad. 85 to 87, still pretty close. There's a the bulldog's a dirt thing. Oh, rats. There's a the Nazgul too, so okay, so we've seen everybody. MP's running out of men. It's still saying it's in favour. 86 to 87. So slightly in favour of the defenders at this point. And we've got these crossbows here. Looks like they're loading up. Are they firing? No, they're not firing. Okay, we've got Dragon's Wrath Crossbowman here. It's possible the crossbows can get a hit here on this side. I've got Sapphire Blazer. Reloading, can't see them far. Now, the Union Shadow Base here can get a lot of nice kills here on this side. Uh, they're not far, okay, they're reloading up. We'll see what they can do. Yep, here we go. Uh, that's a sweet sight to the attackers. Okay, it is 87 to 89. Still got some heavy hitters here from both sides. Now this is nuts. The, the attackers need to sort this out quickly. MPs getting in the way here of Joran Shadow Bows. He shouldn't be doing that. That's affecting his accuracy big time. Uh, we've got the catapult here for some reason. Attack is there, a little bit of um, failure in communication there. 88 to 89 though.
go down there. They're trying to hit. Still trying to hit the Dunedin Rangers with the Javelin still. 55 to 62, yeah? 88 to 90. Times two speed here, guys. I'm really not sure what else the attackers can do here. We've got some fire here. Okay, you've got East Run crossbows, I can see firing. Attacks plan now once MP Beckley runs dry. Look, his troops are on their last legs. Eighty nine to ninety. Snaggy skirmishes wavering. They still have ammunition. Okay, Tanker's trying to conserve their javelins, it would seem. to 91. As you can see the bar is really shifting in favour of the defenders here now. Javelin fire there coming in from Battle of Trajan. Ninety to ninety one. Four thousand frames left. Here. Urkai crossbows. Three thousand frames or so to go. Ninety one to ninety two. to 93, I think the attackers have got this in the bag, they've got the biggest heavy hitters left in the field. And I think the attackers just have some RT units and crossbows and some javelins, I think all their decent units are done, they've been defeated. It's 
So I think we'll have six feet. I think. Your players are getting defeat. Ninety two to ninety four. Okay, they got an peace general. I think this is the last thing left. The last troops left. The enemy army flees the field. Pursue and run them down. I might get one more volley. Maybe. That's it. We've got Hayden Guard in this battle, victory. yep. This is a clear victory. Well done, Tom. Okay, congratulations to Captain Jervis, Y2K86, and Tundra Fox on their victory. Captain Jervis getting 3,824 kills, Y2K86, 2,856 kills, Tundra Fox, 3,496 kills. So, awesome job from the defenders. Well done to Tundra Fox for the opening skirmish there with his cab. He certainly put the um, attackers on the back foot and took out the Black Guard of Barador. Had the attackers had the Black Guard of Barador when they begun that final assault, I think the defenders were done for. But because Tundus Fox took him out, the attackers ran out of steam. Once the Black Watch Legion were done, they lost that drive to sort of pass, sorry, pass the summit of that hill and just sort of take and take that area and begin their advance onto the Citadel. So, I, two critical points there. I think the loss of the Black Guard contributed, unfortunately, to that defeat. Not having them definitely weakened that attack at the end there. It's not Jerome's fault, it's just the fact that he lost him. That's it. Now with the end now with the Blackwatch Legion, when they pushed, MP should have had his all forces there ready to go to push with him. When he when he summoned when he came up to the summit of that hill there, Blackwatch Legion's pretty much toast. Their push was done. That was they had one shot to get that right. And I think they were just a little bit too late on it. They should have tried to communicate that push better with each other. So those are my criticisms there of the battle. Um, unfortunately, that's just what it is, guys. That's my honest opinion. My thoughts, you can disagree. You're free. You feel free to. Um, MP Beckamy 13 got 1,125. Duran, 1,235. Clem, 935. Irish Gun, 734. Irish could have, I think, used his witches a little bit better there. Unfortunately, that little, that first volley into the walls definitely <laughs> didn't help things. Um, but he came around, he took out the Multian, I got. You know, finished off well with him. Stuart Balrog got 4, 000, sorry, 1,453 kills. Very nice there from Stuart Balrog. That big push there from Stuart and MP definitely started to turn things around. And then Clem came in with the extra support there, along with Joran and Irish. But um, yeah, I think Stuart and MP definitely turned things around for them when it wasn't looking too pretty there. So well done to them for leading the way. Um, looking at the kill count there. The Monty Honor Guard, 585. The second unit we know got taken out by the Witches, 197. Fountain Guard, 180 and 267. Citadel Guard, 203. Guards from Skidia, 108 and 133. Very nice. Pelagon Marines, one unit got 65. Leon, one got 269. Gondor Archers, 121 and 246. Marksman Andros, Marksman Candros, sorry, 226. Veterans of Skidia, 149. Utility Rangers, 247. And 467, so he had two units of them, not three. And the rest of his units did, um, did good to excellent, to outstanding, I think. So, Ke thank you to Captain Jervis for sending in the replay. Hope you guys enjoyed the Siege of Minas Tirith. This is Scouts of Entertainment signing off. Catch you guys in the next one. Bye.